Hello, hi, positive vibes, good day, today we are going to be analysing and redrawing this piece of art. Well, what is it? What does it mean? Why is this piece of art so painfully offensive? Well, stick around and I'll answer all of those questions for you. Before I get into the video, I have to say subscribe, please, and like the video, please, and comment, please. I know you hear that all the time, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I have to say that. I feel like I'm obligated <laughs> to add that into every video. And also, I appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. So, first thing we're going to begin with is the structure of the video. So the way I'm going to structure it is I'm initially going to talk about what this art is and where it comes from. Then we're going to analyse the meaning of it and why it's offensive and the negative effects of art like this. And then finally we're going to talk about my redrawing, how I redrew it. And of course, throughout the whole entire video you'll be able to watch my drawing process in the background. So what is this art and where does it come from this was initially a cartoon from an old australian newspaper the newspaper is called the bulletin and it was published in 1886 the artist is philip may who was a very popular cartoonist he was actually shipped over i shouldn't say shipped over but he was brought over <laughs> from britain because his art was really popular so this drawing is called the Mongolian octopus which is kind of weird because it was actually meant to paint Chinese people in a bad way. But why would somebody do that? Well let me tell you why people were very ignorant and to be honest still are but it's good because we're educating ourselves anyway I digress. Around the time that this newspaper was published, Australia experienced a gold rush and at the time there were Chinese immigrants who came into the country and the fear was that the Chinese were going to ruin Australia and take all of the money. Um, this is also, it also comes under the umbrella of the yellow peril which is this, again, a very ignorant idea, um, the yellow representing all Asian people and the peril representing the fear and it originated actually in the 19th century which is also during this time but there was this whole fear of Asians specifically like East Asians like Chinese and Japanese coming over to Western cultures I might make a video on that if you guys are interested but it is a lot so I'm not sure so now that you guys have an understanding of the context where the image came from and why it was made we're going to analyze the actual image itself so just in case the image isn't clear for you guys the picture is basically of a very stereotypically drawn asian man in the center with his head and then he's got octopus tentacles coming from his body and each one of those tentacles has something written on it which we will go into depth in a little bit so my random interesting fact is that the metaphor of an octopus is taken from Victor Hugo's novel Toilet of the Sea. He describes the octopus as a devil fish which reflects the fear of sea monsters that was prevalent in 19th century European imagination. So again, the context is so important because you guys now have a better understanding of context. It makes more sense why the artist made specific choices. The first very striking detail is of course the head of the octopus. The narrow eyes, the large forehead, the buck teeth, the angry expression are all negative stereotypes about the way that the Chinese people looked. Clearly the artist is trying to paint them in a negative and derogatory exaggerated way. And this is something that so many artists have done. Like if you look through my series, you can see that they will dehumanize a group of people that they want to degrade, literally dehumanize them to paint them as a monkey or an octopus or a doll or whatever it is to make them not human. Because by dehumanizing them and taking away their humanity, it is so much easier to treat people in a disgusting way and rid yourself of the guilt. So moving on to the eight tentacles of the octopus, they all represent something different and I'll give you guys a brief run through of what they individually mean. So 
Firstly, we have cheap labour. This was the fear that the Chinese would take the jobs of the local Australians because they would essentially work for nothing. The next two tentacles we're going to look at together are Pak Apu and Bantan. I hope I'm not pronouncing those horrendously, which I probably am, so I'm sorry. Um, but those are both Chinese gambling games. So these tentacles basically meant that the Chinese were gamblers, they were irresponsible, they would waste money, which might have actually been a greed fueled belief due to the gold rush that was happening at the time. I don't know, just something for you to consider. The next the fourth tentacle that we're going to look at is immorality and for this one there are two pretty scantily dressed women and for this one they believed that the Chinese were immoral and that the women were promiscuous and I guess the fear from this would be that the immoral Chinese women would take away all the husbands and tear apart families and things like that. For the fifth one, you have both smallpox and typhoid, which are diseases. This is putting the idea in people's heads that the Chinese might bring diseases to help push the negative narrative by making people more afraid. Tentacle number six. And here we have opium, which is a drug. And this is the idea that the Chinese would bring drugs and bribery, which is number seven, is about the Chinese being morally corrupt and not sticking to laws, and the fear that they would affect law enforcement. And then finally, number eight is about custom robbery, again, which is about money. So that is very interesting considering the context of the time. So I know that times are different and what was acceptable back then is very, very different to what is acceptable now. But honestly, it's kind of heartbreaking to imagine a Chinese immigrant during that time reading this sort of stuff about themselves or the horrible things that they would have experienced because of it, you know? But anyways, pulling myself out of this corner that I've crawled into <laughs> because I actually do care about the content that I make, we need to talk about why this is still relevant today. Why does an old cartoon from 1886 in a newspaper have any relevance? Because we don't learn from our mistakes. So, if you watch my YouTube videos, then you would know that I love studies. Um, and there are essays upon essays about the underrepresentation and misrepresentation of Asian Australians, Asian Americans, Asian Europeans, and Asians. <laughs> and honestly, no cap, I feel like I could write a million word essay on topics like this because there is just so much to it but of course I can't fit it all in one video um, so I would recommend that you guys do your own research a hundred percent I mean I wouldn't mind doing the research for you and making videos but that depends on the type of content that you guys want to see but I will give you one example and um, but of course there is a lot more that you can research but yeah, just for the video's sake and time's sake, I'm only going to give you one example. Okay, so since we're talking about discrimination against Asians and current times, I think most of you guys know what this study is about. And I don't even want to say it because I don't want the two to always be constantly linked. But this study was published in The Guardian, that's where I read it. But it was conducted by the Asian Australian Alliance in July, which was very recently this year. <coughs> or last year should I say, <clears throat> sorry, and they identified 377 reported instances of racism in just two months and there are some specific examples in the link down below but I'm not going to read any of them because it's not necessary and they're just really nasty. And this really reminds me about the tentacle about smallpox and typhoid. Like, have we really learned? Have we moved on? And this part I want to address to individuals specifically. So this part is for you to think about yourself. Because when I talk about racism, I'm not 
specifically, unless it's historical, like, oh, this group of people did this racist thing to this group of people. When I'm talking about racism today, I sort of want to address individuals. I want it to be something for people to think about themselves, like how they've affected other people or how they've seen other people be affected or how they've been affected by other people. So when I'm talking about racism, I'm not trying to demonize any specific group of people. What I really want is for people to think about this personally, how they've experienced and seen these things. And I think when you're more educated and you're in these situations, then you're able to better recognize racism, understand where it comes from, and possibly think of the best way to deal with that situation. So now that we are going to the end of my video, we're going to talk about my art, this lovely thing that I've been drawing in the background. So of course, it has been me redrawing the initial drawing of the Mongolian octopus. It's very different because it's in my art style and I wanted to send a completely different message with the image that I'm drawing. Something random I always wonder about my art in my series is, is my art propaganda? Because it is definitely biased and I am sending a political message, I'm trying to get a meaning out with my art so I always wonder, but then when I think of propaganda I think of something negative so I'm not sure if that applies. So the first thing I wanted to do, of course, was get rid of the big ugly center that was on the original drawing. I wanted it to be like a super cool, confident, well-dressed, well-presented Asian man at the center because I think this is a side that we definitely need to see more, especially in things like movies. I think this is something personally I've seen that is underrepresented. So I wanted to get rid of all the negative, ignorant stereotypes and draw a very appealing, strong and confident Asian man. With the tentacles, I did want to keep them, but of course I changed the words into great Chinese inventions, which I thought was really nice. So instead of it saying the negative things, it's pointing out some positive things that we've had from China throughout history. I did actually spell a couple of things wrong, like acupuncture, but I corrected that in the final edit and I do have a few extra little tweaks and stuff, but you will be able to see that at the end of my video. I'll show you the final drawing right at the end, but yeah, I really liked the way that this one turned out and I feel like the message that it's sending is pretty clear. I hope that you guys liked the way that it turned out because I really did. I hope that everybody learnt something new today and that we can educate other people. I hope that you guys like the way that it turned out. If you have any suggestions as well for art that I should do or other art I should redraw, please comment them down below and let me know. And that is pretty much it for the rest of my video. Thank you to everybody for watching. I always appreciate every single person who subscribes. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe or don't, it's okay.